to have given us friends like you. Thanks so much. talking about the kinds of people who don't make a lot of noise, whose lives aren't flashy or gaudy, God-loving, God-fearing people who believe in certain fundamental principles, principles like self <laughs> It's a philosophy, I hope. Well, not today. The, a Chicago stockbroker wrote. Instead, they read and edited and went over every sentence by zapping chapters from one computer to another over telephone lines. Until finally those impulses arrived in the memory of the second computer. And thus in seconds, words composed in work for our soldiers to watch in South Korea. Maybe you'll throw in a Cornhusker Sooners game. or in the years to come at any moment to sample the sounds, sights, and goings on many thousands of miles away. And all of this is merely a prelude to a future of the nations. And now, it's my pleasure to be the first person to say... occasion. The Gray family. Robert Gray and Donald Gray of Washington, D.C., Dory Gray Sattler of Denver, Colorado, and Jean Gray Miller of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. This communication we promise to be good stewards of your investment, and we will always honor your parents, Marie Gray and the late C.J. Gray, for whom this building is named. Now one of the highest honors which any college can bestow on us.
of America to receive the honorary degree Doctor of Communications from Hastings College. say one thing though, with all of my appreciation for this, you have compounded a certain sense of guilt that I've nursed for 56 years. States, accompanied by Senator Dave Carnes. I'd say ought to, you've already got Tom Osborne. <laughs> and if you ask me who ought to be the next senator from Nebraska, I'd say the same. The best man for the top is <laughs> And his name is Dave Carnes. <laughs> I know because Dave has served as a member of the administration, as he told you, first as a White House fellow, and then in the Department of Housing and Urban Development. The fact that a Nebraskan like Dave could perform so ably in that department is testimony to his skills, his breadth of interest, and his commitment to making this country a better place. But most important, you're talking about a man who knows about the joys and trials of life in the fields. He's not just any politician, eager to win a farmer's vote with a pretty television commercial. <clears throat> Dave knows how it works from the soil up. Who better to work on agricultural legislation than the owner and manager of a family farm? That's Dave Carnes. Yeah. Dave has already 
already taken the lead on crucial farm legislation that's fiscally responsible, market-oriented, and fair. And Dave's leadership and hard work on behalf of the family farmer were recognized when I signed the Farm Credit Reconstruction legislation and the bipartisan drought relief. But there's more to Nebraska life than the work of running a farm and helping to feed the world. These are the values that Nebraskans believe in. Values like a belief in tradition and an unshakable commitment to family and community. And those are the values that Dave Carnes stands for. man with four daughters. Dave knows the need our children have for a serious traditional education. He's pressed for measures to make sure that our children receive the education they need, and so has his wife, Liz. She's on the school board in Omaha. Dave knows also the kind of threat to traditional values that are posed by those magazines that you see in places wrapped all up in plastic. He doesn't want his children or yours or anybody to be buried in that waste. And that's why he's pushed hard for legislation against pornography. Yeah. Now, if I may say something about another friend of mine, I know in my heart that the next president will be George Bush. I think it's vital for the future that George has what I had when I first got to Washington. Don't have it anymore, but had then. And that's a Republican Senate. Yeah. If we hadn't had that in those first six years, we never would have been able to achieve the reconstruction that we have and the economic recovery and so forth. It's going to be a tall order this year, but it's an order that can be filled if all of you see to it that Dave Carnes is back in Washington come January. <laughs> Nebraska and the nation will be all the better for it. I have to tell you, as I said, we couldn't have accomplished what we have so far had that not been true. And uh, I'm so grateful to all of you for sending this man up there for the time that he's been there. But I'm going to be twice as grateful if you just keep him on there. And I'll feel a lot better about going home to California. <laughs> guarantee are told, made up and told by the people of the Soviet Union. <laughs> and the last one that I collected came to me on the way home from the summit in Moscow. And one of our Secret Service agents brought it to me. The joke they were telling before we left was that Gorbachev and I were in his limousine and I had my Secret Service chief with me and he had his security man with him and we were sightseeing and they took us out to where there was a beautiful waterfall. And this has to do with family, too. And they, we got out to look at the fall, and Gorbachev said to my Secret Service man, go ahead, jump, go over the fall. And he said, I've got a wife and three kids. Well, he turned to his own man. He said, jump, go over the fall. And he did. And my man climbed down around the rocks, around the fall, to see if he could be of any help or what might have happened. And he found the fella down there wringing out his clothes. And he said, why did you do that? He said, well, he told you to jump and go over. Why did you do that? He said, I got a wife and three kids. 